Hello guys, just wanted to make a quick video on some of the prerequisites to actually perform a successful installation of the Nutanix Kubernetes platform. Uh, probably should have covered this uh, much earlier, but it's, I guess, never too late, right? So let's get started. So it's uh, some slides for the start, but after which we'll go into a demo. So uh, obviously we want to ensure that the first thing that we do is we check the supported infrastructure uh, operating systems matrix. So we can just click on the link. I'll paste this link in um, in the YouTube description as well, uh, which will redirect you to this page, right? So uh, this list gets updated uh, every time we release a new version to you know, update which are some of the latest operating systems that we uh, support. The next thing is obviously I highly recommend using a Linux, uh, Jumpos, or Bastion. Uh, depends on how you call it. But you can use any distribution of your choice. Uh, my distribution that I'm using is uh, based on Rocky Linux, or you could just use uh, Mac OS and uh, you know have all of these requirements uh, installed on your Mac. Um, then obviously we need a container image. Uh, sorry, a container uh, engine. This allows us to basically run the uh, Bootstrap image on the Jumpos or Bastion or on your local device, <coughs> your local Mac device. Uh, so the container engine, you could use things like uh, Podman or a Docker container engine. So in the demo, we'll take a look at how to install uh, both of this. Then uh, we obviously need to have kubectl installed because uh, we definitely want to log into some of the, the, the clusters to actually perform any configuration tasks or check any logs. Uh, I will also recommend you know enabling bash completion. So this has uh, I've got a URL over here that actually leads you to the official documentation as to how to perform the uh, kube completion, bash completion. Right. So we can use this, uh, and I will have this linked in the description as well. Um, I like to use the K9S. This gives me a very uh, visual way to actually view my uh, my workloads in my clusters. It also automatically refreshes, so that's quite cool. Um, I would recommend you know having a registry proxy cache so that you don't constantly pull uh, container images from the public internet. Uh, it's actually cached within a local system. Uh, Docker Hub credentials, obviously, because we do not want to hit into rate limits. Uh, SSH keys, so if you don't have this, you can actually use the SSH key gen command to actually generate this and to prepare any certificates if uh, those are self-signed and you're not using things like um, you know, GoDaddy or, or uh, Let's Encrypt. Okay, So this is for the non agapt uh, version. The next one is agapt. <clears throat> so um, I won't cover this again because it's um, uh, covered with before already. But what you 100% need is an agapt registry, which is Harbor. So like uh, like the previous like the previous one, uh, I mentioned that you know registry proxy cache, uh, we can actually use the same thing or same installation methods for the agapt registry. So I will also be doing a demo uh, in another video on how do we perform a uh, quick installation of uh, Harbor. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. So let's get started with the demo. So I'm locked into Prism Central over here. Oh, just need to log in again. I'm going to clone two of these images. So I'm just going to rather maybe just clone one. So I'm going to call this Rocky Linux image um, docker, right? And another one, let's call it Podman. Okay, so I'll start this two virtual machines. And we can log in to actually perform the installations. So the first one that we are going to go ahead and do is um, uh, to install the, the container engine, right? So I've got a Docker one over here. Let's log into this guy. So we can actually copy the steps from the official Rocky Linux uh, documentation. Just go over here. This will be included in the description as well. Let's copy the commands.
very straightforward, no frills. And Docker PS. And I can do things like Docker Boom uh, Nginx. And we know that this is this works, alright. I'm just gonna clean up. So the next thing that we want to do for this Docker installation would be to uh, install kubectl uh, k9s. So I have got a Notion page that I have got all of this. What I'll do is I'll just put, throw this in the description. But essentially, what it means is that it's going to run all these commands, right? So basically, it install bash completion, it installs kubectl, it configures uh, bash completion, uh, installs Helm as well as k9s. So we now get kubectl, we get k9s, and we've also got helm. So relatively quick and straightforward, right? So if you need SSH keys, you can do this thing uh, called SSH keygen. And what it's going to do is going to save, it's going to create a um, SSH key for you to can perform things, uh, to can perform uh, remote SSH logins. And uh, certificates have been self-signed. So um, I think in my deployment videos, I have already covered how to perform self-signed certificates uh, creation. But I also provide some steps on how to provide to uh, create such certificates uh, in the description. So this is essentially what we need for uh, Jumpo's image. Uh, or a bastion. So what we can then do next is uh, maybe take a look at the port man one. Portman, the steps are essentially the same. So, um, you could install your container engine of choice. In this case, it's Portman, so I'm just going to DNS install dash y Portman. Portman is installed. We can pull images. Can delete images. Looks good. Then the same script that I would use to perform the installation on kubectl, k9s, and so forth. So now we have got Portman, we have got uh, kubectl, we have got k9s, and we have got help. Okay. So uh, for the agap, the mandatory one is a registry that is agap. So I'll do a demo on that, how to perform an installation of that later on as well uh, in the next video. Uh, lastly, there is some now, if you're deploying on top of Nutanix, regardless whether it's um, uh, in production or in a test dev environment like in my environment, uh, I'm using Community Edition, but uh, the minimum required Prism Central version is 2024.1 or later. Uh, for AOS, it's, uh, if you're using the LTS, that's going to be AOS 6.5 or later. The current latest version at this current point of time of recording is 6.5.6.5 and for ESTS, it's going to be AOS 6.8 or later, which I'm currently using 6.8.1. Right. So I'll do the recording of um, the Harbor Registry setup uh, in the next video. Thank you for watching.